You are now tuned into the People Before Politics radio show. Brought to you by the good folks at Black West Chester. Black West Chester. Black West Chester. Black West Chester. Check the newspaper. Black West Chester. Black West Chester. Black West Chester. Check the newspaper. Real talk for the community since 2014. So now we are going to go into our next guest. Um, Lorraine, would you like to introduce our guest, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, our next guest is Miss Nadine Lyons Burns, who is uh, a founder and secretary for the Charter School of Educational Excellence here in Yonkers. She's also executive director of the Sharon Community, which is a not-for-profit humanitarian organization here in the city of Yonkers as well. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome you. To the show. Thank you so much for inviting me to the show. I'm excited about talking to everybody tonight. And, and let me say thank you for your support. Um, the school has has advertised a few times over the over the um, past couple of years, and I, I don't take that lightly. So I thank you very much. It's my first time actually talking to you, so it's good to meet you. So tell us a little bit about the school. Um, you, I, I think Lorraine said, "Well, you wanted to found you the founder or one of the founders." What um, what went into found, found, founding the school, and how did that process come about, and what made you want to do that? Okay, yes, I am one of the founders. Um, our chairman, Eddie Laguerre, uh, Sabeda Cruz, myself. Um, Friend of mine, yes. <laughs> Wonderful, I love him to death, both of them, yes. You know, a friend of mine who's no longer living in Yonkers, Sheila Morris. We were all founding members. Um, actually, Eddie had introduced me to the idea of charter school in the late 90s when I was the president of the Westchester Black Women's Political Caucus Yonkers chapter. And it stayed on my mind. And then we got together and we started saying, you know, let's do this. You know, Eddie was a real driving force along with Sabeda. And, you know, we did, you know, had to write the proposals, interview with the state department of education, review curriculums. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of hard work. But it's something that I really believed in because I feel as though parents and students and community as a whole need to have options. Our schools are overcrowded. And, you know, education is a big thing for me, as it was for Eddie and Sabeda. All of us had children. Um, in the schools, the local schools here. So um, I was just so excited about doing it. And it was a dream that became a reality. It's a lot of hard work, still is a lot of hard work, but we managed to partner with other folks who are just as committed as we are. Our teachers are committed, our custodians are committed. It's such a wonderful school community and our parents are committed. And that's a big, big, big part of it. So so one of the things we try to do here is educate people as much as possible. Um, so for people that don't know, what is a charter school? And then I want you to, after that, I want you then to, one of the big um, criticisms of a charter school is that it possibly takes away money from the public school. So if you can just answer what is a charter school and then address that um, criticism. Because, you know, people need to know. People, there's just so much white noise out there. People don't know uh, what's true and what's not true, so. The charter school is a free public school but instead of being authorized and overseen by the local school district, we are overseen by the, either the state education department 
or the State University of New York. That's who we report to. We have an actual charter that lists the board members, our mission, our, you know, it details everything about the school and curriculum. And because it is a free public school, we take students by lottery. We cannot pick and choose students. Um, and that's why the same money that is used for other public schools is used for us, except the charter schools receive less. We receive about 75, 80% of what the district schools would receive per child. Okay, okay. Um, also, let me, um, I should have said this in the beginning, it is Women's History Month. I'm calling it Women's Month. Happy Women's Month. So we're celebrating, we're celebrating women um, in Westchester for the whole month. So I just wanted to uh, throw that out there. Yes, we are. And we've got a lot to celebrate. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, um, now I know a lot of men might not agree fully with me, but um, it is good to see more women <laughs> That's involved. a bottle of drink now. He said, hold on. <laughs> Uh, 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 I, I'm, not, I'm not saying we need to have all women leadership or anything like that. Like, I'm not going to say we need all black leadership or anything like that. But it, it's it's good to... Women have been marginalized for a very long time. Um, like, African Americans, no right to vote, no right to do this, and all this other stuff. Um, so y'all had a lot of obstacles, and being black and being a woman, that's like two things at you. And women are um, right now uh, excelling to a, a whole new level, breaking glass ceilings of some sorts. Um, and in a lot of arenas, we now have our first um, female um, vice president. Um, 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 you know, which is which is huge, regardless of color. Just female vice president, like, um, and 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 I, and I think that's an accomplishment. You're starting to see more of a diversity in our. Um, in Congress, and and I've said plenty of times on the show, the Yonkers court now looks more like the city looks. Um, you know, usually courts are just you know white men, you know, point blank. Um, the court in Yonkers actually looks. You you had two African American uh, women this year, and and you had a Latina uh, um, the year or two before that. So so you know, um, women are reaching, and and I think it is time. I think we need to work together though. I don't think that we need all women or, you know, and, and get rid of men. But I think, you know, this country got messed up a little bit with some just all men uh, leadership. And it's time for to give some women some shots and, and, and it's time for us to work together. We, I think I, and we can't let people we can't let we can't let outsiders divide us, though. And see, that's that's one of the problems that happens. Yes. You, they excel women to, to, to put down men. You know what I'm saying? And and. and you know, we, we can't we can't let that division happen amongst us. So I that's what we're doing, celebrating women. And I just, you know, wanted to bring that up and it's good to see um some some more uh women in leadership right now, you know. It's absolutely necessary. Our society is not all one race, one gender, one religious belief, but anything. And so we gain by including everyone. You know, every right. everyone has different skill sets, different experiences that they can bring to the table. And it's important for all those things to be considered because in the instance of a school, you're working with children from many different areas, backgrounds, ethnic groups, religious groups, income levels, you know, all kinds of different experiences. And the more people that we have working with our children who can understand where they're coming from and how to help them move along and be successful, the better. We all complement each other. There is no reason for us not to work together. Right, right, right. So I just wanted to say that, and you know, uh, I definitely wanted to throw that out there. Um, um, you know, I think um, some people push it too far where they want, you know, like I don't believe that we should vote for 
um, a person because they're black, because we're black. I don't think we should vote for a person because they're a woman or because they're a woman. I think we should vote for the best qualified candidate. You know, um, I've been called, I actually was called sexist on one of our shows by someone because I did not support Hillary in the um, primary against Bernie. I thought Bernie was a better candidate that year. But it's like, I'm not sexist because I didn't vote for her. I thought Bernie was a better candidate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's my opinion. And that's my right as a, as a voter. As but, a um, Right. But, but, you know, so we have to stop the noise and, 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 and have real talk with each other. And I think once we open that door and have real talk and sometimes have the difficult conversation, we can cut through some of that white noise. And, and I think we'd all be better off. So, I mean, that's just my two cents. I just wanted to throw out there. Lorraine, you want to kick off the interview? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Uh, going back to the charter school of, of educational excellence. I know it's very successful, so much so that there's a lottery and a waiting list and you folks are expanding. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the success of the school and your expansion. Okay, well, you know, the school was founded in 2005 and we started just with the elementary school. And on Warburton Avenue, by the way. Right, on Warburton Avenue and you know, we had we had kindergarten, first and second grade, and each year we added a grade. And when we got to the end of what would be elementary school, you know, we had started having conversations about, well, maybe, you know, we need to expand the school. And the parents were demanding that we extended, expanded the school. They loved the experiences that their children had with us. They were comfortable, they were achieving. And the parents didn't want to, them to leave us, you know, because, you know, our administration, our teachers, teachers, assistants, everyone, you know, was such a cohesive team. And so we went ahead with the leadership of Mrs. Laguerre, who was always, always up for the challenge and pressing on to the next and motivates us all. We built the middle school. And now we are almost completed the high school, which will be, um, is right adjacent to the original elementary and middle school campus on Lamartine Avenue and Warburton Avenue. So we've got the, pretty much a whole block there. And I can't tell you how excited I am about it. Something that started just as an idea in 2005. Not only did we do it, we exceeded everyone's expectations. And, um, you know, we have a legacy here. And it's wonderful for the city of Yonkers, for the community. We are open to the community. We invite them in for different things. We try to make sure that we include as many people from the community as possible. Businesses, of course, the parents. Um, it's important. We have the Nepean Community Center right down the street. We collaborate with them. It's just important to all of us that the community understands we're part of the community. We're just not a standalone educational facility. We're part of the community. I live in the community. Eddie lives in the community. He lives in the community. Sebeda, you know, on, on and on. We are from the community. You know, I am a transplant from Long Island, but that was 1983 when I moved here. So I'm part of this community. What, what part of Long Island? In Nassau County, a little town called Lakeview. I went to Malvern High School. Okay. Okay. I, I, I spent some time in uh, Central Island, Suffolk County, but I, I, I was always um, in Freeport, Roosevelt, Hempstead, all that area, <laughs> Garden City, all that. Yeah, so I, I know that area well. Yeah. yeah. I want to... I'm sorry, I want to add, AJ is being modest right now. <laughs> he is known for having coined, uh, popularized, if not coined, the term Strong Island. Okay. Part of his... What's the name of your group? I'm sorry, JVC Force. Yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was in a rap group called the JVC Force. We actually made the record in 1988, 33 years ago, called Strong Island sampling Chuck D's voice um, yeah. in, a, in a chorus. And um, we are 
greatly responsible for um, the term being popularized and 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 um, and called that. So, um, but shout out to Chuck B because we sampled his voice. He's the one that said it in, in one of his records that we sampled. But before that, no one was really claiming Long Island. Most of the rappers were from the five boroughs. So even the rappers that were big in Long Island were not claiming Long Island. Rock him mentioned it casually. Chuck D mentioned it casually. But after that, it gave pride for a lot of other people in Long Island to then represent Long Island and, and, and with pride. So yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, we that this is the 33 year anniversary of that record uh, this year. So, yeah. um, but moving on to the high school, um, mm -hmm. it's a regional high school, which is something a little different. Which means that we will have students from the city of Yonkers, of course, but we're also accepting students from the surrounding towns and also from the Bronx. Now, one of the things that we did, especially in light of what's going on with the pandemic and the hardships that people are going through is that we're providing free transportation for those students wow. coming out from outside of the district. Wow. Okay. How has the pandemic, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it turned everything upside down. Uh, we went through this, do we homeschool? Do we partially homeschool? Do the teachers work? At the school, and then the, the, the kids stay home. Do we do it se a separate, you know, a couple of days a week? So, how 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 were the challenges um, that you had to up overcome uh, throughout the pandemic, and how did y'all out overcome them? There were great challenges with that, and one of the biggest challenges is that when you're having remote learning, your students need to have access to the internet, and they need to have a device, a laptop, a desktop, a iPad, something to be able to participate in the classwork and do their homework and submit their work. And we have a portion of our community that is financially challenged. So we made sure that we provided laptops for everybody. And okay assisted them with getting internet service as well because we had to not let these kids fall behind it's hard enough learning remotely this is a you know the kids are better at it than we are <laughs> but it's still difficult uh being at home not in the classroom distractions of the children in the family are on you know on at school at the same time lots of voices phones ringing so we worked really really hard um and like i said the leadership of mr laguerre is like no other you know he calls the board and says listen we've got to tackle this issue our superintendent cindy lopez she's wonder woman i don't know where she gets the energy our team it's so important all of our teachers put in extra time and effort, revised their lesson plans, tried new techniques. They're incredible. I have never worked with a team of people in my entire career, and I was born in the 50s, <laughs> okay, that are so dedicated to making this work for our students, for our parents, and for this community. You know, that's can I, I'm going to let you, I just want to comment what she said and then I'm going to give it to you, Lorraine. So you said every student um, got a laptop. You said every, every student that attended got a laptop? Everybody. I think that's great. Okay. I think that's great because one of the complaints was some house, they keep saying how many houses got laptops, you know, in, in public school, but it's like some houses got three, four kids, you know, so every kid didn't have a device. So you're saying every student that attended got a device. If that's the case, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to um, compliment you on that. And, 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 and um, that, that's, that's really great. Go ahead, Lorraine. No, I, I just wanted to mention that, uh, uh, by the way, shout out to Carmen Gomez Goldberg, who's also part yes. of that team who's out there um, every day she goes above and beyond um i do want to mention that um she said that there's a lot of uh families that are um economically challenged and and you know 
let me just say, there are a lot of young women that have their children in, in the charter school. And I can tell you, I can vouch that I know so many of them that have told me that they would have found it difficult to survive and difficult to, to navigate the system during COVID had it not been for um, the school being so attentive and so helpful. And when, when I see people online saying stuff like about, you know, about the school, you always have somebody from the charter school, one of the parents saying, not the charter school, well, we got this, <laughs> not the charter school. All my kids have access to computers, all the kids do. Um, it, it, it is um, a very well known, a very well respected school. Um, and, and I can speak for the young mothers out there. Um, it, it's been a godsend to them because uh, unlike, you know, um, uh, the Board of Education, you just can't, to speak to somebody, you have to make an appointment via the Board of Education. There's so many channels to get to the principal, to get to this one. In the charter school, they have an, a more of an open door policy. Well, I don't know about COVID now, but no, no one feels like they're a burden. No one feels like they're intruding if they have a problem, if they have a question, if they need any help. The charter school has been there um, helping people with food insecurities uh, during yeah. COVID uh, as well. I mean, it, it's not just education, uh, ed education. They're helping them, you know, during the a time of COVID uh, as well. Now, let me ask you a question, uh, uh, Ms. Lyons. Uh, do you have regular music art uh sports uh, how does the sports program work we've got there is we okay aside from the academics which we're doing great at we've been a yeah we've been a reward school for what seven years designated by the state so doing great there but we've also got the athletic teams because children need more than books you know classroom work they need physical activity to help them grow, learn to work with each other, et cetera. So we have football, we have basketball, we have soccer, we have cheerleading, we have, um, what did I miss? But we've got a full sports program that will continue to build, um, you know, for males and females. Um, and they've been competing and doing very well and learning those additional skills that you build when you're part of a team and socialization, et cetera. And they, you know, up until now, of course, they were traveling to some of the other top schools competing in those, at those schools in those games and, you know, the staff and board members and everybody was going to the games and we would stream it on our, our page on the internet and it's been a wonderful experience for the kids but they need that physical exercise and the socialization as well and to see be exposed to other things what else is out there a lot of our kids because we didn't have a high school were accepted into top high schools throughout the region that some of them didn't even know about before they started wow. traveling around with the sports teams. So so I know that, so, you know, the public schools play other public schools, the Catholic schools play other Catholic schools. So the charter schools play what, other charter schools? Is that how that works? We we play, play charter schools and other private schools. Okay, okay. You know. Do you guys have a band? <laughs> we have a wonderful music uh, program. The gentleman who is now our principal of our high school uh, really got our music program started. Um, he's an excellent musician, Mr. Derek Palmer, but he's, he's so talented in so many ways, but we tapped him for the high school and he's an amazing principal for the high school. That's what I was going to follow up, um, the, the music and the arts you have. So you have great um, art programs and, and, and other programs like that um 
outside of af- a- yeah, academics. You know, we're, at, we're adding to we're adding to you know you start with what's required and then you just keep adding. <laughs> We have a question from the audience, um, Gail Baxter. Um, question for Nadine: What is the selection process? What is the selection process? Does the charter school accept children with IEP special needs? You break. You you breaking up a little bit. I think you said, "Do we accept children with IEPs?" Yeah, and what yes. is the selection process? Okay. Um, yes, we do. We absolutely do. Um, now, in terms of you mean selection process for all students, or you mean for... Because for all, I think it was for all students, and then there was a, a second part, which do, do you accept special needs? Okay. The, for all students, it's a lottery. You, you put your name in, and... You pull them out, <laughs> and you know it's the luck. It's the luck of the draw. That's the only fair way to do it. Um, you know, so that we're not just picking the cream of the crop. We're working with every type of student from every background and educational experience. Now, now let's go. Let's finish <coughs> the the lottery. I'm uh, looking babe, at. Uh, the lottery application deadline is on March 29th, the end of this month. Am I correct? Correct. Okay, so if anybody wants to apply or be part of the lottery process, where should, where should they go? How, how can they do this? Okay. Or is it, yeah, because it's not close to the 29th. So just for those that are listening, they can access the application through our website. Mm-hmm. Which is Charter School for Educational Excellence dot org, or they can also call the school and contact um, us at nine one four four seven six five zero seven zero extension four. Again, that's nine one four four seven six five zero seven zero extension four, or the website charter school of educational excellence.org now i would like to include that our high school just like our elementary and middle school does have a very rigorous challenging curriculum our students begin their regents courses early so that by 11th grade they already have what's required for a regents diploma we also have a CTE program, it's a career and technical education program, which is another certification program for those students that might want to pursue other types of careers. We have the um, food service, we have health sciences, and we have the automotive program. Nice. The, the culinary arts program, I should say, not food service, culinary arts, actually. Very nice. And That's the, good. And I want to go back to school. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the automotive technology and technology being a big part of it, because, you know, now everything is done through technology, computer. Yes. And so they'll be learning how to utilize technology in that field as well. We have a partnership with St. Joseph's Hospital for internships. Um, We're collaborating with area colleges as well. So our students have the opportunity to start an early college program and get college credits by the time they graduate from high school. And I know for my daughter who unfortunately was too old She was already in high school when we opened the charter school, but through her school, she did that. She had 20, I think she had 21 credits when she, of college credits when she graduated from high school. Wow. You know. That's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, we're providing as many opportunities as possible for 
all of the students that we have so that every one of them knows when they're leaving the school, they're prepared to go on to college, go into a career, you know, follow it more fully. They've gotten a taste of it to see what they like. They've explored different things. They've had internships. It's very, very important. We have a lot of children who just have absolutely no idea what to do, where to go, what they like, what they don't like, and get lost sometimes. We don't want any of our kids to get lost. We, we don't have time for our children to get lost. Absolutely. Dr. Bob, so, any questions? Let me personally extend a welcome to you, Ms. Burns Lyons, um, to the show. I have to say that I've had the honor of going by the school on several occasions to pick up the very uh, generous and uh, much appreciated um, <clears throat> um, ad money that you guys have been um, <laughs> placed for us. Um, so I, I do get to see um, Carmen Gomez Goldberg um, pretty often during the course of the year. So, I mean, I'm, I certainly want to thank you, um, the organization for supporting Black Westchester. Oh, absolutely. Listen, this is our community. We have to support each other. I, I, I wish everybody felt that way, but um, I digress. But <laughs> <laughs> So I, I have to tell you, as, as a professional educator myself and someone who happened to write a um, dissertation on um, public education in the United States and um, the impact of the charter school movement, one of the critical questions that are on the minds of um, at least, uh, yeah, a, a, num a number of us is a concern um, that charter schools were originally conceived to sort of function as a, a Trojan horse, if you will, that would undermine the, um, <clears throat> the union gains that had been made mm -hmm. in, in our public schools. And I do know that, um, so I was curious to know, um, you know, how does your school compare to that of public schools when it comes to the treatment of, of labor, the, the teachers? Do you guys, do you guys have a union um, for your teachers? And, and if you don't, I simply don't know. Um, do you, do you think you, you still do right by your teaching staff? Um, you know, I'm very happy to answer that question. We mm -hmm. absolutely do right by our staff. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> so they would leave. They would leave someplace else where they could, you know, have all the things that we need. Um, I'm not either pro or anti-union. It, you know, really depends on the circumstance. If the employees are not getting what they need and they need it, then all well and good. Um, I've never been in a union myself. I have worked in places that had a union, but I was always part of management. So, um, but I can tell you that we do our best to match whatever is going on in the district with, for our staff. And when we can do more, we do more, exceed it if we can. But, you know, because you know, we are just the elementary, middle, and high school. So, of course, we're much smaller than the, the larger district. We're so more in tune and in touch every day on a daily basis with our staff. We, we're like family. We want to be sure that they are getting everything they need so they can do their job properly, so they can feel good about coming to work, so they can feel good and be in a good disposition to work with our students and our parents and with each other. Um, we do a lot of team teaching, grade levels and working, they work together on everything. And, you know, we go out of our way to try to make sure that they're treated as well as we would want to be treated and as well as any teacher any place else 
that is in our unit. As I said, I've, I visited the school and I was just reflecting um, while you were offering your commentary that my impression has been that um, it's an exceptionally um, warm, welcome and happy staff. You, I've walked through the building. So I've, from, I've been always um, very courteously and graciously welcomed by the security at the main desk to make sure that I'm authorized to be there. And then as I've had an opportunity just to walk on the first floor to, to use the restroom on one occasion, because they're going to make sure you don't have access to the kids without authorization. That's um, right. That is um, too much to their credit. But I did notice that um, the teachers seemed particularly, um, you know, they seemed happy. They seemed, they seemed like they enjoyed where they worked. So, one, of, one of the things that we do at the charter school <coughs> is we hire both new and experienced staff and put them together so that we have a constant flow of people that we can promote from within. All of our teaching assistants have bachelor's degrees. Most of them, almost all of them have degrees in education and are on their way to getting certified to be teachers. And we did that deliberately so that the teacher, when the teacher has the teaching assistant in the classroom, he has someone that's truly a partner, or he has someone that's truly a partner, not a babysitter. It's a full partner. And that, that was important to us as well. And as I said, you know, Mr. Palmer was our math teacher. He, because of his particular expertise in uh, music, with, in instrumentation, et cetera, he got that going with at the school. Um, he's also, because he is a black male, has been an excellent role model for our students. He brings so much to the table. He hadn't thought about being a principal, but we encourage him. You have a master's degree. Go ahead and finish getting your administration degree. You, we, listen, we're moving you on. And I, I think he really loves his job as principal of the high school at this point. I know the parents think he's wonderful and the kids do too. Um, we believe in helping people grow, not just the students, but also our staff. That, that's great. And I just want to say as a testament, um, Damon, um, Carmen also gave Damon a tour, my partner in Black Westchester. Um, again, when he went to go pick up a check and um, she gave them the full tour. And all I know is I got a call afterwards, one to let me know he got the check, but two, he wanted to talk to the family because he was thinking about having his grandchild go there. He was like, oh, she's definitely going here. And that, and that, and that was right after his tour. He was, he was like, this is where my granddaughter's going. Like he, he was, you know, he, he, he felt that confident um, after the tour he got. So I haven't personally been um, able to be there like that, but both Bo, Bo, Bo Bob and David speak highly of, of, what you, of what you're talking about and confirm what you're saying. It's important, it's also important to note that the staff reflects the community. Yes, yes. So, you know, all of our, our principals were teachers there first. So they proved themselves right there in the school of their compassion and their dedication in the classroom and interacting with the parents and the rest of the community. So we've promoted, all of those people were promoted from within. But we are looking for some more teachers. <laughs> we, we do have some- Good to know. Good to know, yeah. We, we have some openings, yes. Okay. If you, if you let me know, we definitely we we post job um um uh job opportunity job opening um because a lot of times when things are, are like that are available, it doesn't trickle down to our community. We have qualified people in some of our communities that don't give the information until it's too late. So when if you if you want to, you or Carmen can provide me with you know yes. what you're looking for or whatever, and I will definitely put a, a okay. post 
on 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 the website and then share it on social media because we want to promote you know more of our community having access to this kind of information. So definitely, we'll do that. By the way, AJ and Dr. Bob. Yes. Um, we've been asked uh, to join the Charter School of Excellence in May for Career Day. They asked the children. They mm -hmm. gave them options of who would like they like to see so come in and invite and they chose black westchester as one of the um organizations to come in and speak so i'll, I'll send you guys the info well, i'll be delighted i'm honored absolutely thank you carmen That'll thank you everybody and at, at this group. that's great that's great so okay so um I know we're coming kind of close to the end, but is there anything I didn't ask you that you want people to know about the charter school, about the process, about anything? Is there anything that you know you want to get out that we didn't ask you? Oh, I think we covered a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, invite people to check us out, to take a look at us. Um, if if you're looking for a school for your child, seriously consider the Charter School of Educational Excellence. You know, contact us at the website or the phone number that I gave you. Uh, Carmen Gomez Goldberg is our point person for all of that. She is a wonderful, energetic uh, person. She will make sure that you have all the information you need and, you know, those kinds of things and answer your questions. Just, you know, make, make an appointment if you want to see the school. I encourage you to do that. Um, we, right now, we're not having open public meetings anymore, you know, our, our meetings, but we have our meetings online and we do publish that um, in the newspapers when we're having our board meetings and they're open to the public get on zoom and come to you know see what we do in our board meetings what we're up to what we're doing we're an open book you know we work hard and we do have to raise a lot of money because like i said we don't get the full student allotment per student and um but we welcome everybody and we work very well with the district because we're all part of the same community. So so I just want you to know, so while we're talking, questions are coming up in the comment section and Carmen is already answering them. Um, the question was, what is the number of students in the classroom? Carmen said 25. And then Stephanie said right under the state guideline. And I guess Carmen said we will all be invited to a high school ribbon cutting in July. So mm -hmm. she's, she's so she's in the comment section answering questions before I can ask you. Um, so I just wanted to. And that is an example of how good and the charter school is. That's you right. See? You see how she responds to the audience. That's what she. They, they like that with the parents and anyone else. You know what, Miss Burns? You kind of like a superhero too. <laughs> you are also the executive director of the sharing community. Am I correct? I was until July. Okay. Um, I had been with that organization for 28 years and, you know, kind of just moved, you know, I was always part of administration, but I became executive director seven years, almost eight years ago. And, um, you know, with the changing yeah. going on, uh, Last year, actually, the sharing committee was merged into West Hat. Got it. Got it. Got it. But you're also involved in a lot of other boards. And, and well, I don't know if you have time, but I know that you have been involved in a Black Women's Political Caucus and, and several other boards and organizations as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I just, I just go about doing what I think needs to be done. Because and you're doing a great is, job. You're doing work, an awesome job. The work is what is important. You That's know, true. both my parents were community activists in Long Island. And so that's what I know. 
My father served other people till he died, you know, through his church, through community organizations. My mother did the same. And so that's what we know, my brothers and sisters and I, that's what we know, you know? Let me ask you a quick question. Uh, uh, I know that, that the charter school is known for its academic excellence too. What are, what are the, um, the test scores like? Our test scores are out of this world. <laughs> We're at the top all the time, we're, you know, we just, but I have to give the credit to the leadership and the teachers and the support staff, because they make it happen. And the parents who work with the teachers, none of us can do this by ourselves. Some students are going to excel regardless of what's going on, other students may not they need that collaboration and we're about that collaboration we want we believe and we know that every student can learn and we want every single one of our students to learn to the best of their ability and whatever it is that we need to do to make that happen we're going to do it Absolutely. Um, yeah, we will definitely be, uh, let us know about the ribbon cutting. We will definitely be there to cover that okay. and, put that, and put that in the newspaper in the whole nine. I just want to applaud you on on, on, on the work. I, like I said, I've been hearing good things. And of course, Lorraine and, 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 and you know, like I said, when Damon, when Damon got the tour and he came out, like on the way back, he called me and he was, he was raving about the school. That's like, this is where I want my granddaughter to go. And that says a lot from Damon. You know, I don't know, you might not know Dave, but that says a whole lot about Damien. Um, and, I, and I heard everything I needed to hear, like without seeing it myself, um, that, that was what I needed to hear. And then, you know, what Bob said just now, and um, you know, I wish all the best. And I, I did know about the, um, the high school, because I know, um, I think they'll even had a meeting. Um, we've had a guy on from uh, Amani, uh, Amani Charter School in Mount Vernon, and I know, it was some talk about some of the kids that when they get out of eighth grade, maybe going to um, possibly going to the high school when it opened. Was that Jim Killeran? Um, no, I talked to um, Charles Stern, his wife. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Charlie Stern. He's he's a he's a frequent guest co-host of ours too. Okay. Um, so he comes on sometimes, especially when we're dealing with national politics and stuff. He comes with stats and charts, and he yeah he <laughs> he does his thing. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but shout out to about, Jim Kellerin though. Yes, yeah, shout out to Jim Kellerin. Um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Listen, Carmen, well, Carmen wrote they are number eight in the state of New York, and were named the reward school by the state of New York for six years in a row. I, I did want you to explain. You said that before reward school. Explain to our, our viewers, our listeners, what is a reward school? What does that mean? Because you know, for people that don't know. Huh. Okay, let me see if I can do this well, because I'm <laughs> the person that the principal and the superintendents usually talk about that. But it speaks to the quality of the education, the, the performance of the students, the innovation in the educational uh, techniques, um, the curriculum that you have. Encompasses all of those things. Of course, the test scores are important. Um, so it considers all of those things. Okay, okay. So that's a beautiful thing. Six years in a row. Yeah. And number eight, number eight in the state. That's that says a lot. Um, when a lot of the complaints around the state and the country is, you know, um, our test scores and our, and our schools declining and stuff like that. That's it's good to hear. Um, it's also good to hear that um, you are aware that all children are not going to be college bound when they leave high school yes. and that you, and that, you know, the certificate situation and treat, teaching them trades to prepare them to go into the workforce. Yes. That is, and that, that's something we talk about here in Black West just a lot that I want to see more schools do that. Um, that's always a, a, a critique. Um, you know. our, our society, has a tendency to go all to one thing or another thing. Right. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with either track. 
Right, right. College is not everybody's thing. And then some people, it may not be their thing now, but it may right. be their thing. My, my father went to college as an adult. Right. right. He already had five children right. when he went to college and graduated. And my mother, my grad mother went back to school as um, <laughs> when I was probably around seven or so. My mother went back to school. And after seven to 10, I had to feed my younger sister because she was in school at night after work. Yes. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah. You know, but he he had learned a trade first. Right. Are there any obstacles that the school is facing that uh, we can we can you know um, bring forth and and help you out with you know educating anybody about it? Or are you guys are good? You know, I think all schools have some obstacles. You know. There's never enough money. <laughs> I don't care what school it is. It just seems to never be enough money for any public school. Um, other than that, you know, every once in a while, you have to deal with the different little pot shots people take at you. But we're too busy doing the work to worry about that. Absolutely. All right. Now, speaking about that, are you guys doing hybrid? Or are you guys doing it all in or virtual? We have some children who were 100% remote, some were hybrid, and we're going to four days a week in school. That's where we're going to start uh, April. Okay. Okay. Um, any last questions, uh, Lorraine, Bob, for, for, for our guests? No. Good. I, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show, giving of your time. Um, I, I enjoyed this conversation. I've learned more about the school than I, than I did, than I knew, and hopefully our, our viewers will as well. Um, you know, I'll make sure I put this on Black Westchester, you know, the two separate interviews, and I share it, you know, and, and give it to you so you can share it with people who okay. haven't seen Great. Yeah. So, so. So much. Um, Having me, this has been great. Yes, yes, and 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 I, I got to give credit where credit is due. Lorraine was like, we have to have her on there, and I was like, well, Women's Month coming up, schedule her for Women's Month. So this is uh, celebrating uh, one of our women of Westchester that people need to know about. One of the, one of the women of Westchester too that people need to know about is the great Sabrina Cruz. Absolutely, Who, the Sabrina Cruz, Eddie Lagare. So Beta Cruz is a phenomenal woman. She's the owner of the of the um, charter school with her husband Eddie Laguerre, and she has been part of this community for as long as I can remember. Everything from cultural to educational to I mean, uh, on and on and on. And it's uh, I'm just a proud Latina. <laughs> when I when I when I hear her name and I hear Carmen's name with the charter school, it, it, you know, it's it's wonderful to see. And she kept it in the community, you know, yeah. like you said, Miss Burns. That's right. That, yeah, she that's kept it in the community. What we wanted to do, we didn't want to go locate it someplace else, you know, she she poo poo kind of stuff. We wanted it here. We yeah. wanted the people in the community to have easy access and enroll their children in this school. And, you know, I call Sabeda my partner in crime because I've known her for many, many years. I knew her before I knew Eddie. Um, They're both amazing people, amazing people. Are. Really, really are. You know, when she was with the Power Authority, we collaborated on things. She's just a wonderful person and also another Ever Ready Bunny. Energy to burn. You know, all, all of these all of these people have such dedication that we don't stop and think, you know, we're tired. We just keep going and we keep each other going because we have a purpose. We have a mission. And, you know, we're not satisfied unless we are fulfilling that mission. Fantastic. I, I wish you all the best of success and. Um, again, um, open door policy. If you need to address the community, you, you for whatever reasons, or you know, you you have issues that you need to you know address or whatever, you know, um, just uh, call, have Carmen call us or call, get in touch mm -hmm. with Lorraine or whatever, and and definitely please utilize us as as a means of reaching the community. And thank you again for your support. I I, I know people 
they'd be like, oh, I'm always talking about advertising and stuff like that. But, you know, I want to thank a lot. I want to thank those who see the value in what we do and, and actually support us like that. And, and, and your school has definitely been on that list and, and, and it's a consistent supporter. Um, so I, 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 I have to just say thank you. We appreciate that. Because that helps, that's, that's keeps us going and allows us to give the information for free to the community, you know. So, so we you know, what to happened to keep, us? we have to keep you going. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I, I wish everybody felt that way, but I definitely appreciate that. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you um, for all that you do. And um, like I said, whenever you need to come back, uh, please just let us know. And um, I, again, happy, again, happy Women's Month. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. This was this was a pleasure. And the pleasure was ours. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely.